For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put that work in Hamashiach give us that order Prepare slaughter For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put this work in Hamashiach give us that order Russian Jews, right? And what's your last name? You don't Colton. Colton, right? Now check this out. Ask me the same question. Where's your ancestry come from? I don't know. Africa, I guess. Right? So I don't know nothing else. But Africa is a continent, not a country. Yeah. Right? When you look at me, you would say I'm what? See that? But guess what? That means that Africa is a whole continent. I can't pinpoint nowhere that I come from. America is named after who? Amerigo Vespucci. Amerigo Vespucci is not my ancestor. So how I'm, how, why am I being called that now? Because my ancestry has been lost. Right? So what we've done was we took archaeology, right? We took the history of the world. Listen, did you guys, uh, are you familiar if your, if your ancestors are converted to be Jews or they, you believe you guys are descendants of the biblical Israelites? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure? Um, you're not a practicing Jew? No practice? Family owns really practice you know, but they claim to be Jew. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's kind of a silly distinction. You said it's a silly distinction. Somewhat so. Yeah. Raise it up. Because it's because uh, it's not a practicing religion. If you're not practicing a religion. Right. It's straight to call yourself a religion. You don't practice. But but that's the thing. I guess that's where our line of questioning comes from because it's and as a listen, it's a nation of people, it's a race before it is a, what they would call a religion, Judaism, right? Who got that in um, 1 Peter 2 and 9 in the, somebody get it in like the NIV or the NLT? ESV. Is that what it is? Race? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ESV. Give me the ESV, quick. All right? Because, and the reason we ask if there's, a, if your family was convert, because there was a lot of people that adopted the religion and then somehow turned it into their ethnic background, right? They were just bring it up. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 9 in the ESV. Bring it out. But you are a chosen race. This is Peter, right? An Israelite that walked with the world called Jesus Christ. He's telling his people that they are a chosen race, right? He's not talking about what they do. He's not talking about what they believe in. He's talking about them as a race, as a chosen race, right? Go ahead. A royal priesthood. And, and, and within this race, there is a priesthood. That's when you start getting into the practices. That's when you start getting into the belief system, right? And the things that they do. They were a chosen race. And within this race, they believe, they take on a belief system that God has chosen them to be his priest. Read. A holy nation uh -huh. a people for, for his own possession. Now it says a holy nation. What makes these people holy, the word holy is not some spooky thing where, oh, I'm filled with something. No. What makes someone holy or a race holy is them being separate. Now what was supposed to separate this race from any other race, it goes into their lifestyle and the things that they practice. Who got that in, um, get that Leviticus 20 and 26 point. You believe in God? That's a complicated question. No, it ain't. I mean, it either is, either you do or you don't. Now, your explanation as to why you do or why you don't might be complicated, okay. but either you on one side of the spectrum or not. Okay. Or some, sometimes people say, I'm agnostic, which means I don't know. I is that where you're at? I'm, I'm uh, mm -hmm. thinking about it. I'm under process. That's why so, I came up, I wanted to ask you guys what you have preaching about. Yeah, we're preaching about the Bible. Can I ask, I see your film, but it's not right. if I ask you to put yeah, on my own. A lot of times we, we, we record these things so we can go back into the interaction. So talk, a lot of times people have either points, perspectives that we never heard before. So a lot of time it's, it's for study purposes, okay. right? Yeah. Um, go ahead. And, and also too, for uh, uh, safekeeping, right? We film for my safety and for yours, sure, right? Sure. And a lot of times people like to lie, you know? So I like to say, don't, do we got to go back and instant replay this? All right, hold people accountable as, as well as ourselves. Bring it out. Okay. It's Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. Uh -huh. no. 25, excuse me. Leviticus 20, starting at 25. Uh huh. Ye shall therefore put different between clean beasts 
and unclean. Go ahead. And between unclean fowls and clean. Uh huh. And ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl. Go ahead. Or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground. So one of the things that separated, right, made this chosen race holy or separate from others, they started implementing the practices of separating clean beasts and unclean, right? Things that they were regarded, things that were regarded as okay to eat versus things that were not. It was something that was unique within this time that other races just did not do, right? Go ahead. Which I have separated from you as unclean. And this is as a result of the commandment of the God that they believe in, right? The God that they practice and worship and serve. Keep reading. Verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me. So the God of the Bible said that the Israelites, right, which include the Jews, were a chosen race, and they were chosen by God. Go ahead. And ye shall be holy unto me. And that they were going to be holy, meaning separate. The ways in which they, God gave them commandments and a lifestyle to follow was going to make them distinct from other people. Read. For I, the Lord, am holy. For God is holy. Go ahead. Because he's distinct from any other God. Read. And have severed you from other people. To sever is to cut. As, as everybody once in the world had very similar practices and there was a blurred line as to, you know, distinguishing who was who, he says, I'm going to make a clear difference between you guys and any other race. Go ahead. That ye should be mine. That we or the Israelites should be uh, separate and belong directly to God, especially the God of the Bible. That's why he gave them their laws. Go ahead. That was it. So, so are you guys, are you guys, what are you, are you Christian? We follow Christ for sure. Yeah, because Christ doesn't really follow that if I'm not mistaken. You are mistaken. You are mistaken. Get that Matthew 5. So when you say you're still figuring it out, are you still figuring out whether or not that there is something that governs over us, or are you still struggling with whether or not it's the God that we read about in the Bible? Thinking about a lot of, a lot of different things. You don't mind talking about it? Is that, is that something that you say you're uncomfortable? Why is that? You know, I ever told you you look like Rick Roll. You know, so, yeah, has anybody ever seen you like Rick Roll? Rick Roll, yeah. Now we're gonna let do that. Bring it out. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Bring it right. out. Go ahead. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. This is literally Jesus Christ saying. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. Go ahead. Or the prophets. Uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Or the prophets. So when you say, if I'm not mistaken, didn't Christ come to do away with that out of his own mouth? No. So when you ask us, are we Christians? We definitely follow Christ. But are we following the religion of Christianity? No, because it's not supported in the Bible. Christianity teaches. Well, we believe in the God of the Bible. We believe that we are the people that you read about in this Bible. And that separating of clean beasts and unclean, clean fowl, unclean fowl, was the practice that God gave unto our people. So it's not necessarily a religion, but it's a practice that is associated with our race and ethnicity. Okay. But again, going into things like Christianity, it teaches you something like what you just said. Didn't Christ do away with that? But Jesus Christ out of his own mouth just says, I did not do it. I guess, well, it's just my understanding of the covenant, right? There's the old covenant, the new covenant. Now, like I said, we love talking about this. Now watch this. Let me, let me finish this, and I'm, we're going to get into the old, I mean, the, the old covenant, and then we'll get into the new covenant, right? Finish it. Hebrews 8. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He didn't come to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy any of the prophets. He came to fulfill the things that they had prophesied that he would do. Real quick, Deuteronomy 18, 18. Quick. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 18. Go ahead. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Talking about Jesus Christ, the prophet that was going to be raised up from among the children of Israel. Read. Like unto thee. It was going to be like unto Moses, right? This is who's given this in the book of Deuteronomy. Read. And will put my words in his mouth. This is why Christ says, I come speaking the words of my father. Go ahead. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, Read. which he shall speak. Which he shall speak. This is why it's important that people believe on Christ, because he becomes the doorway back to the father. Go ahead. That he shall speak in my name, uh -huh. I will require it of him. He will require it of him. So when we read here, I come not to destroy the law, 
Deuteronomy is the law. I come not to destroy the prophets, Moses being one of them, and then give me Jeremiah 31, 31, which literally deals with the New Testament. I mean, to me, the Old Testament, and it also speaks about the New Testament. He didn't come to destroy those things. He's come to fulfill that they spoke of him, and that he comes to be the very thing that they talked about, right? Uh, what you got? Jeremiah 31, get it. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, uh -huh. that I will make a new covenant. A new covenant, read. With the house of Israel. The house of Israel, go ahead. And with the house of Judah. And with the house of Judah. This is why when you, your family considered themselves Jews and not necessarily Israelites because the nation was split into two nations. All right, go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not the old covenant, right? That was made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's going to be a new covenant that's going to be made with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Go ahead. In the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, read, which my covenant they break. They broke that covenant, right? They say if there was no fault of the first covenant, they have no need to be sought for the second. Read. Although I was a husband unto them, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Go ahead. But this shall be the covenant. This shall be the covenant. Read. That I will make with the house of Israel after those days, uh -huh. saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. So the very law that it speaks about that we have to keep, that a lot of Christians say that Christ came and done away with, according to the prophets that he says, I come not to destroy, only to fulfill, already says, the, law, the new covenant is going to be where God puts the laws into the hearts of the, of the people. Read. And write it in their heart. And he's going to write it in their hearts. Go ahead. And will be their God. He's going to be their God. Read. And they shall be my people. And then they're going to be his people. So the new covenant is still the keeping of the commandments. Still the keeping of the law. Well, right? I guess that question is to be under the okay. Okay. I've probably not read the Bible as well as you have. But I remember, I think, Acts. Somewhere in Acts, there's some You're, 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 you're talking about Acts 10th chapter and dealing with the vision that was given to Peter. It does not. Why do, I, why do we say it does not deal with that? Because that vision was talking about people, not food. See what I'm saying? The Gentiles and then allowing Gentiles to also follow Christ? Yes. Yes. Right? But you're saying they should still keep kosher, is that what you're saying? I don't really like the word kosher, right? Because there is a there's a ritual behind making something kosher, right? Uh -huh. It means that a rabbi has touched and prayed over the food and how it and, and within the process of it being prepared. So we don't necessarily like uh, kosher because we don't believe in those rabbis that they are of God. Okay. But are they Torah centered? Are they um, following the commandments of God or rooted in the commandments of God? That's the lifestyle that we would promote. You right. know what I mean? So again, even dealing with that, there's still there's still certain phrases, right, that they'll use to show you that swine is not good. Go ahead. No, no. Get, get Hebrews eight real quick so we can finish this about the uh, Let's look at Hebrews chapter eight, verse eight. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So we see it reiterated here, even in the New Testament, as we read it in Jeremiah the Old Testament. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers uh -huh. in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant. Because they did not continue the covenant. Let's lay it out on the table, right? Let's see if this makes sense. God gives his commandments to the Israelites. Israelites violate the commandments. The Israelites turn around and get punished for violating the commandments. And then there's this roller coaster of them getting right with God, God saving them, them then turning away from God again, and then him punishing them. That goes throughout history. He finally sends his son, right, to be a sacrifice for them and to be an example for them. He keeps the commandments. He's trying to promote people to keep the commandments, but then he dies and turns around and tells people, you got, don't got to keep the commandments anymore. Isn't that the very thing that they got in trouble for in the first place? No. Okay. I'm saying, what? That, that just kind of sound wild and weird. You got any kids? No. How old are you? 21. 21.
21. If when you were growing up and your parents said, have your room clean, right? If you didn't have your room clean, was there consequences or repercussions coming? Probably. Probably, right? You look like how you probably kept your room clean, right? Yeah, 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 I was trying to check your pedigree real quick. Oh, yeah. See if you're going to tell the truth, right? But now, consequences and repercussions were going to come. If you then still didn't clean your room, and they hired a maid to come in, and she cleaned it better than it was when y'all moved in, does that mean you never have to clean your room ever again? That day, see, Christianity is not rooted in the Bible. It's loosely based off of the Bible. They use bits and pieces here and there, but they're not rooted and they do not use the fullness and totality of this Bible. That's why a lot of times people have a misconception. They come up thinking that the Bible says and means something, but it didn't. All right? Go ahead, keep it. Because they continue not in my covenant, uh -huh. I regarded them not, Read. saith the Lord. Uh -huh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel uh -huh. after those days. After those days, go ahead. Saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind uh -huh. and write them in their hearts. Go ahead. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Keep reading. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, uh -huh. for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So in the day that the new covenant is established, we're not going to have to teach people anymore. That's right. And, and why are we not going to have to teach people anymore? Because the laws of God are going to be written in our hearts and in our minds. And we're going to just know God. Now get that in uh, uh, 1 John 2 and 4 quick. Right? It says, then you, he says, for all will know God. What does it mean to know God? Let's see. salvation through Christ? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we can actually get that. Uh, you, got some, you got your Bible on you? Revelation 14, 12. You got it? Bring it out. First John chapter 2, verse 4. Uh -huh. now, he that saith, I know him. If you say you know God, read. And keepeth not his commandments. But don't keep the commandments. Go ahead. Is a liar. Is a what? Is, is a, a liar. liar. Is a liar. So anybody going around, turn around saying you, if that's done away where you don't have to do that, that you're not only a liar, but you're Causing people to be liars thinking that they know God and follow God and don't keep his that's, commandments. That's why I say it's a complicated question to ask if you believe in God. If you say you believe in God and it's still sin, how do you believe in God even though you're still sin? Now, I'm going to be fair with you, right? The, the, the question of the belief in God does not have to be from what they will call a Judeo-Christian perspective. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I asked you even after that, I said, are you struggling with believing in something up there or whether or not you believe in the God of the Bible yeah. because the scriptures speak about there be Lord's many and God's many but there's only one that the people of God the children of Israel and who they serve why because we read earlier that he severed them from other people so that they could be his that's why they're chosen uh go back to the Matthew uh five real quick because just the concept and the thought of people teaching that the law is done away with Christ again him directly himself addressed and spoke on Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 uh -huh. you know, See not that I am come to destroy the law Do not think that I am come to destroy it Read Or the prophets Or the prophets Go ahead I am not come to destroy But to what? But to fulfill We read one of the things he fulfilled in Jeremiah Which was the prophets We also read one of the things he fulfilled in the law Which was the prophets Right? The prophet was going to be raised up And then that new covenant would come through Christ for verily I say unto you, uh -huh. till heaven and earth pass, until heaven and earth pass, read, one jot, go ahead, or one tittle, a jot is a stroke of a T, a tittle is the dot on top of a I, a lowercase I or a lowercase J, right? One jot or one tittle shall what? Shall in no wise pass from the law until what? Till all be fulfilled. And all hasn't been fulfilled because you clearly see we're still here waiting on prophecies to be fulfilled, one in particular, the new covenant. Why are we not in the new covenant? Why hasn't been, the new covenant been fulfilled yet? Because we still have to come out here and teach people to know God, right? And all don't know him. Keep reading. Verse 19. 
Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. And if you break one of the least of the commandments, go ahead. And shall teach men so. And turn around and teach people to do it or that it's okay to do it. Go ahead. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. But whosoever shall do and teach them. But if you keep the commandments and if you teach people to keep the commandments, read. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And I just don't understand why Christians aren't trying to strive to be great in the kingdom of heaven. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7 uh -huh. and the swine and the what and, and the, the swine, swine. Okay. though he divided the hoof Read. and be cloven footed Read. yet he chewed not the cud he's not chewed the cud there's a, there's a requirement for the beast of the field they have to be cloven footed and they have to chew the cud in order for them to be clean or consider something we are eligible to eat Read. he is unclean to you the swine is unclean unto us go ahead of their flesh shall ye not eat not eat of their flesh, go ahead. And their carcass shall ye not touch. You shall not touch their carcass, go ahead. They are unclean to you. And that's what we read earlier in the later part of the book of Leviticus where it says, do not make your souls abominable by consuming these things, right? Give me Revelation 21 and 8. So even when, again, people try to put the Old Testament against the New Testament, in the Old Testament, it tells us how we become abominable. Bring it out. Got it. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Read. But the fearful... And unbelieving, right? So, and watch this. So when we read here, it's going to actually demonstrate that eating swine is on an equal level of not believing, of being an unbeliever, right? So the fearful, the unbelieving, who else? And the abominable. The abominable. Like I said, we read earlier. Do not make your souls abominable by consuming the things that I have separated from you as unclean. This is a commandment from God, read. And murderers. Go ahead. And whoremongers. Uh-huh. And sorcerers. The Lord says you are to eat swine. You're on the same level as a murderer, a whoremonger, a sorcerer. Read. And idolater. And even an idolater. Read. And all liars. Read. Shall have their part in, in what? the lake which burneth with fire so, and brimstone. So eating, no, he's good. So eating swine. And make it will, will make your soul abominable and if you make your soul abominable then you're gonna get caught up in the lake which burning with fire with the liar with the murderer with the whoremonger with the sorcerer and all the unbelieving and all manner of liars as well so we start to see and understand how this bible actually merges and blends so well but we see different religions perverting the text which is the very thing that christ was having an issue with That's like, right. up, uh, matthew 15 and 7. and you got that in um Deuteronomy 28 hold that 68 is what we're gonna get. Okay. Now we go 115.68, which is the point. We're showing something. You got the numbers down pretty good. This is my life, sir. Right? Yeah. This is my life, right? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. You understand? Bring it out. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Uh -huh. Yo, ye hypocrites. Ye hypocrites, read. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you? Isaiah or Isaiah is, is the Greek way of saying Isaiah. Isaiah has already prophesied of these hypocritical people, read. Say. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. These people have uh, uh, are dealing within lip service. They're not actually doing actions. They talk a good game, right? But they don't walk a good game, read. And honoreth me with their lips. They, they, they spew all of the praise to God out of their mouth, right? And honor God with their lips, but what? But their heart is far from me. And in, in the Bible, when you're dealing with your heart, it's dealing with your mind. It says your mind is actually far from them. Why? Because they don't do the things that God required them to do. Keep reading. But in vain they do worship me. In vain they do worship him, read. Teaching for doctrines. Teaching the, for doctrines the what? The commandments of men. They teach the commandments of men. That's why in the Christianity they say, oh, you can't shack up. You ever heard of shacking up? Uh, in, in Christianity, shacking up is... You can't live with your girlfriend, uh, right? They say no sex before marriage and you can't live with the woman before you get married, before you guys join each other in holy matrimony. And that's just not in the Bible. That's something that they made up. And again, Isaiah prophesied of it and Christ reminded us, uh, reminded us of what Isaiah had already talked about. The so, commandments of men versus the commandments of God. I guess that's what you'd say to, to Protestants who say, quote, through faith alone. 
Oh yeah, through faith alone. So you got that in Revelation? Revelation 14, 12. Bring it up. You right, you right, you right. Revelation 14 and 12. Go ahead. Yeah. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Uh -huh. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Read. And the faith of Jesus. And they have the faith of Jesus. Go ahead. And I, and keep going. Yeah. And I heard a voice from heaven saying. No, no, excuse me. I'm my bad. That's it. But these are the saints, right? This is what everybody... That, that our believers of Christ are tr are striving to be, to be these saints. But the saints that are patiently and faithfully waiting on Christ is those that keep the commandments and that have that faith. Why? Because the faith without works is dead. And, and Protestants will, yeah. if I say to a Protestant, faith without works is, and they'll say, it's dead. Thank you. So how is it faith alone? Yeah. It's just simple questions you ask them that just make them sound a lot, a bit real silly, right? Bring it up. Okay, no problem. I was going to show you something, uh, so let me know what you're doing with the call. Go ahead. In 2nd Ezra 7 and 20. Yeah. For there be many that perish in this life. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Because watch it. Slide on they despise. My bad. 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 My because they despise the law of God. It be many that perish in this life simply because they despise the commandments of God. Go ahead. That is set before them. Read. For God has given straight commandments. He has given straight commandments. It's, it's clear. But for some reason, they want to convince us not to keep these laws. But again, this is what we was reading in Judith last night. The whole concept of them trying to turn us away from keeping our commandments because they know if we don't keep the commandments, then they'll always be able to prevail over us. Right. So we, you said it's exactly like Samuel, right? If I can convince you to break your vow or to break your covenant, that's when you are going to weaken yourself where I can prevail over you. Read. For God has given straight commandments uh -huh. to such as Cain what they should do to live. And what they should do to live. This What's so funny is, is this. As I as I mentioned to the to the to the to the guy, when you quote these things to people and you tell them finish the sentence, they know it. If I sat there and said, I set before you this day what and what, they'll say, life and death. Choose ye therefore what? They'll say, choose ye therefore life. What did God mean when he gave that ultimatum, when he gave that choice to the people? Oh, well, it means to keep the laws and keep the commandments. straight commandments and what these people should know in order to live so if we not keeping them then therefore we're we're dead we not life john 6 and 63 hold that real quick go ahead it's the book of john chapter 6 verse 63 Read. bring it out it is the spirit that quickens. it it's the spirit that quickens. it right the word quicken means to make alive it's the spirit that brings that life back unto us, read. The flesh profit of nothing. Because it's not a fleshly thing that we're doing. If it was according to the flesh, most of our people would have already believed. But it's a spiritual thing because the Lord has to impart or to endow you with that spirit so that he can do what? Bring all things into your remembrance. And bring you back to life, right? So it's not a carnal thing, read. The words that I speak. The what? The, the words word that, that I speak. speak. They are what? Unto you. They are spirit. And they are what? And they are life. Because it's the words of the Most High God that is that spirit that you need to be quickened, right? And it is the very thing that's going to bring you into life. The very thing that he told you and commanded us to choose going all the way back to the time of Moses. That's right. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing when we're able to put this, you know, these things together. And a lot of times people always point out, oh, man, you guys are so sharp with the Bible. This is our lives. This is what we're commanded to do. This is what we are commanded to do, to meditate on these laws day and night. And with that, we then find what? Courage, we find strength, we find success and prosperity. Read. That was it? You got it. Finish that in, in, in second interview. I also want you to go uh, finish uh, Matthew 5 too. Brother, keep dropping that precept, man. You remember how it was, bro, 2010? Come on, don't do that. For God has given straight commandment. Uh-huh. Such as came, what they should do to live, Read. even as they came, 
and what they should observe to avoid punishment. And what they should observe to avoid punishment. So who, how did we fall for the okie doke for somebody to then turn around and convince us that we don't have to keep it? And then what, 2,000 years after the man that allegedly came to do away with it, we still reaping the punishment. And that's something I wanted to point out to him about that, the concept of the consequences or the repercussions that come with not following the laws of God. Because usually when somebody from the Jewish race or Jewish uh, ethnicity come up and they ask us or they tell us that they're Jewish, first thing I ask is, are you a practicing Jew? Because right. we know a lot of the, 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 the yeah, members of the Jewish community, they, they really don't follow the religion, right? Yeah. And he even mentioned it, he's like, yeah, I think it is kind of bizarre how you attach your race to the religion, right? right? Not knowing that the religion stems from the race. Keep reading. Nevertheless, but, excuse me, excuse me. but the whole thing that what the brother just read was the Lord gave us instruction on how to avoid punishment, right. right? And we all know what Christ is coming to do upon his return. That's right. Punish. That's He's coming to rebuke. He's coming to condemn, right? Go ahead. Verse 22. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him. But guess what? It says they were not obedient. Who wasn't obedient? The children of Israel wasn't obedient. Read. But spake against him and imagined vain things. But spoke against the Most High and they imagined vain things. Things that they felt like they were comfortable doing, things that they liked doing, that brought them to nothing. Right. It was of no benefit to them. It did, it was counterproductive to their success. Because our success, like I uh, mentioned earlier, Joshua 1, Verses six to eight. Our success comes from meditating on this law and keeping this law day and night. Go ahead. Verse 23. And deceive themselves by their wicked deeds. Deceive themselves. And listen, just like our oppressor deceives himself with his pride and his arrogancy, thinking that he's done such a number on us, right? Which he did, but he didn't do a good enough job that is going to overwhelm or outdo or overshadow the spirit of the Most High God. That's right. right. And, and, and one of the worst things that our oppressors could have done to us is keep this Bible in our hands. Right. right. They manipulated it. They took chapters and things out of it, right? Out of They say it's over 1,200 chapters in the Bible. And then there's something called a slave Bible with only 250 chapters in it, right? But again, if they really want to do a number on us, they, sh they should have took all of it from us. They should have took all of it. If they would have took all of it, then that spirit would have, would have had to find another way to, 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 to make their abode within us, right? Go ahead. We read it. And said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his way. See, if we try to say that the Most High is not, or we try to act as if we did not know the ways of the Most High. But guess what? He set up prophets. He set up rulers. He set up judges. He set up a lot of people along the way until we got to this point that reminded all of our people just how powerful and to bring to remembrance the ways of the Most High that they should have kept That's in right. mind from John. Yeah. That's right. But his law have they despised. But the laws of God they despised, read. <laughs> and denied his covenant. Go ahead. In his statutes they have not been faithful. So it's funny because it says right here that the people denied the covenants of the Most High. And, and when I had quoted something earlier, a lot of times people make it seem like the first covenant had an issue. It wasn't the covenant itself, it was the people. Right? The scripture says, or the, the Bible ver uh, verse literally says, for finding fault with them, the people, right? Yeah. Now he has to go and establish a new covenant based on what? A better principle and a better promise through who the world calls Christ. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. In his statutes, have they not been faithful uh -huh. and have not performed his work? And he hasn't performed the work. What you have, Richard? There's the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 13, starting at 41. Right? It says, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, uh -huh. and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. See, that, that, there goes that lake which burns with fire again, right? That these people that commit iniquity is going to be thrown into. If the law is done away with, then how can we identify those who are committing iniquity? What's the measuring stick to say you are in line with this right. or you are in violation of this? Right from wrong. Right. right from wrong, right? right? Your do's and your don'ts. We get that from the laws of God. Go ahead. It says, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh -huh. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. And then the righteous men are going to be highlighted. They're going to shine forth, right? Go ahead. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, 
the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure that's hid in this field. Right. Hid around what? A bunch of just dirt. Okay? And we got to go find those diamonds in the rough, as they say. Read. It says, the which when a man hath found, he hideth. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. Right. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, mm -hmm. who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea right. and gathered of every kind. Well, listen, that broad net that gathers of every kind. Go ahead. It says, which when it was full, they drew the shore and sat down and gathered the good uh -huh. into vessels, Read. but cast the bad away. Listen, so the kingdom of heaven, it says, is likened unto a broad net that's going to bring in an in in abundance of things. And then who the world calls Christ, and then the wisdom that comes with Christ, it says they take it upon the shore, sit down, and they divide the sheep from the goats, the righteous from the wicked. Go ahead. It says, the clean from the unclean. Read. Right. Verse 49, it says, so shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Mm. Yep. And again, that's the same thing that the Most High did with the children of Israel going all the way back when he brought them out of the land of Egypt, right? Let me show you something, right? Uh, from, from you being a Russian Jew, right? The book of Deuteronomy. Because your ethnicity and your, your ethnic background is rooted in what is called the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Which, in a sense, I mean, you, you kind of got to have a smidget of a belief or a faith in the Bible if you walk around calling yourself it's a Jew, Jew because a Jew doesn't even exist without this, this text or this history. Yeah, that's right? why I'm, I'm trying to grow it. No, I got you. I got you. I got you. But let's see. Let's, let's see. Let's start from the beginning. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 28. Let's go 115. Niggas to the point. Yeah, Book of Deuteronomy chapter right. 28 from the top. Wrong way. <laughs> and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently uh -huh. unto the voice of the Lord thy God. This is, a, this is a, a covenant that God is making with the children of Israel. If you listen to the voice and the commandments of God, read. To observe and to do all his commandments. Read. Which I command thee this day. Go ahead. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the agreement was, if you listen, I'll put you on high above all nations of the earth. Would you say that the Jewish people are on high above all nations of the earth right now? I don't know if that's fair to say. Who would, oh, so if, know if, if not, where and who is he? Ranking nations like that. So how, come on, you know we can rank nations though. By what? By, what Olympics report. by observation. <laughs> who do you feel like has the most influence, the most control, and has the rule over the entire planet Earth? The United States. You said what? The United States. Now watch this, hold on, hold on. I notice when we keep using the word nation, that you're answering it correctly based off of the modern terminology. What race of people mm. has, because remember earlier, so so real quick, get that real quick in uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9 in the KJV. So what we're gonna show you is that race and nation, biblically speaking, is the same thing. Sure. Because he asked, he asked you, what nation are you from? And you said, American. And I was like, he's actually right. That's 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 accurate. That's why we have we understand and know better to say, well, what's your ethnic background, that's right? right. what your race is. That's now we're right. gonna get to the specific stuff. Bring it out. This They're is first Peter. To a nine this in the KJV. Is, this is the same thing we read earlier when it says a chosen race, right? But let's see in the KJV what it says. Go ahead. But ye are a chosen generation. A chosen generation. Go ahead. A royal priesthood uh -huh. and holy nation. So it's dealing with a generation, right? Which is your gene pool, which is which is dealing with your descendants, right? And, and your, your genomes, right? And anytime you're dealing with, when you're reading the Bible, it speaks about the nation of Israel, right? Because the nation. The people are named, excuse me, the nation or the land rather is named after the people, right? Not just their kingdom, not just their land or whatever is, is now in, uh, uh, names the people. The people name the land. This is why before the children of Israel got the land of Israel, it was called the land of Canaan. When you understand the history. That's it on that. That's it on that. Go back to Deuteronomy. Uh, it's book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. No, hold up. You didn't answer a question. So what race of people? rule the entire planet Earth, that you feel like sits top seat. Even if you want to say America, okay, so within the American nation, right? Yeah. Well, it's kind of a melting pot. It's a melting pot, but you know it's still a strata as well. 
Sure. Right? Because because if we said it's a melting pot, would you say black people rule America? No. Hell no. no. Not even close. No. Would you say Hispanic people rule America? No. Absolutely not. So well, what you race could, you of could people? Into Europe. You said oh, we could ride, ride into Europe? Like, why, but that's not a, a country either. That's a, that's a wide area. It is. So what race within America of people run everything? What do you, okay, let me ask you this. What component, what, 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 what resource do you feel like controls things? Information. Information? I love it, right? I love it, information. Who controls the information in America? Who knows? Come on, man. Who, who owns the information platforms? What do you mean? The platforms that push the information out to the people. Who own them? What race of people? White people, no, no, white people, give a hand, give a hand. But what type of white people? Do they not own these platforms that push the information out? I don't know, do they? Absolutely they do. Absolutely do. Not only, not only does information run the world, but money runs the world too. And who owns these banking institutions? I don't make it up. I don't want to try to force it. I understand how it's put out there in the world as conspiracy, but all we got to do is sit down and just look up who they list on their own uh, uh, BBB website okay. as Ain't who the owners are. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> Have you ever heard of someone getting kicked out of a, 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 of a banking institution as being a member? You ever heard that before? We're going to kick you out. We don't want you here no more. I guess not. Never, right? Would it make sense for somebody that has over a hundred million dollars in that in that institution that they would kick them out? No. But guess what? As soon as somebody says something against Jewish people, coincidentally, the person gets kicked out. Boy, the way, boy. Mm. Okay. All I do is put two and two together and show okay. you a sport. That's all I can do. Okay. So is your is your claim then that it's because they're they're God's chosen people? Hold on. What we're going to do is now we got to go through process elimination and say, are they God's chosen people? Because remember, if they follow the law, statutes, and commandments, then they will be put on high above all nations. But if we can recognize or we can, at least for the sake of conversation, whether or not you agree or not, for the sake of conversation, if we can see that these Jewish people are ruling and at the top spot over everything, wouldn't it be as a result of them following the commandments of God? But most of the Jewish people are atheists. They don't even believe in God. So how do they got the top spot when according to the prophecy, it says that in order to have that top spot, you have to follow the commandments of God. That's right. right. Let us know, okay. Now let me show you something. That's jump, right. Jump to verse 15. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So we recognize me and you disagree. Most of the Jewish community don't even believe in God and or they might believe, but they don't practice. Right? Sure. So we understand now we're getting into where it says, well, what if they don't listen? So we recognize that they don't listen and they got the top spot. Let's see what the Bible says is going to happen to the Israelites if they don't listen. Read. To observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So one of the things that was going to happen if they did not listen to the voice of God and keep his commandments, curses was going to happen to them, right? Let's see what one of those curses was. Jump to verse 20. Verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation. Uh-huh. The Lord says upon them we're going to be cursing and vexation. Read. And rebuke. And rebuke. Go ahead. And all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do. All that they endeavor and pursue to do, there was going to be a cursing and a vexation. But we can't say that about the Jewish community now because they're one of the most successful demographics of people in the world, let alone here in America. They make up of the smallest percentage in America, but make up of the, 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 the most billionaires in, a, in, in the world, really. So their success or everything that they were supposed to do was supposed to be met with cursing if they didn't follow the commandments of God. Read. Until thou be destroyed. Until they were going to be destroyed. Read. And until thou perish quickly. And until they perish quickly. And again, that's just not happening to them, right? Go ahead. Because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Because of their wickedness. Go ahead. The Lord shall make the pestilence 
cleave unto thee. Then the pestilence, right? They were going to be plagued with diseases, things of that nature, read. Until he have consumed thee Go ahead. from off the land, until he consumed them from off the land. They in the land right now, doing quite well. Okay. Even to the point where somebody tried to attack them for a disagreement on how they just split the land with somebody and then they turn around and became the aggressors. They, they seem like they're doing quite well over there. Right. They find successful, they're in the land, they're able to defend the land. Everything contrary to what God said would happen to them for violating his laws. Jump to verse 68, let's get to the point of what was gonna happen to these, uh, the children of Israel for violating God's laws, read. Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Into Egypt. What were the Israelites doing in Egypt? They were enslaved in they Egypt. They were enslaved in Egypt. So this is, Deuteronomy is right after they were brought out of Egypt. They're now in the wilderness. There's now the conversation through Moses with the children of Israel to say, listen, this is the ultimatum. If you listen, I'll put you on high above all people and you'll be blessed. But if you don't listen, curses are gonna come upon you. Everything you set out to do is gonna be cursed with vexation and rebuke, right? He says, then I'm gonna take you back into Egypt, right? It's representative of slavery, why? The very next point. Read it again from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Read again. With what? With, with ships. ships. With ships this time. The route between Egypt and Israel, there was no water separating that. People walk in and out of Egypt and from Israel all the time. Because Egypt is just indicative of, of, of a place of bondage or slavery. That's literally what the word Egypt means. Uh, Mitzrayim in the Hebrew meaning bondage or or a place of distress, right? Give me uh, Revelation 11 and 8. I'm gonna show you something else. Just, how, just so we know and understand, this is not talking about the literal Egypt, but I'm gonna show you why even within the verse as well. You got it? Bring it out. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Go ahead. In their dead bodies shall it's, lie in the street. This is a prophecy of the children of Israel. Their dead bodies are gonna lie in the street of what? Of the great city. Of this great city, right? Read. Which spiritually. Which spiritually is called what? Sodom, Sodom dealing with the wickedness that we read about in Sodom and how we're, they were just completely lawless, right? Kind of the same way that you see the, 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 the uh, liberal ways of modern life, right? We're not going to pinpoint the land just yet, right? But it says spiritually called Sodom and what? And Egypt. And Egypt because there's this place where the children of Israel were going to be being killed, their bodies was going to be left in the street, and it was going to be a place that represented the lawlessness and the wickedness that we see in, in Sodom, and was going to represent the place of slavery that we see in Egypt. That's right. And we pull out this dollar, and you look at the back of it, it got what on it? Pyramid. It's got a pyramid money like on Egypt, right? So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, read it from the top. And let's no see what we're talking about. Cut. Go ahead. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. The Lord's going to bring you into slavery, read. Again. Again with what? With, with ships. With ships, go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The Lord had already spoken unto the children of Israel, saying what? Thou shalt see it no more again. He had already promised the children of Israel they weren't going back into the land of Egypt anymore. That's Deuteronomy 17 and I believe 24. He had already promised the children of Israel, you're not going back into this land anymore. But if you violate me, I'll take you back into those same conditions, but this time with ships. Who did that? Did that ever happen to the so-called Jewish man? Our ships, no. Who did that happen to? Africans. So-called African Americans, but guess what would also happen to the so-called Latino and Native, and Native Indian man? That's right. With those same ships they brought Africans over here, they loaded Latino and Native Indians onto those same boats and carried them back across the water. Right. Is the so-called Black and Hispanic man, are they at the top of the society or are they at the bottom? Not the top. They, are they at the bottom? Sometimes. Who's lower in America right now than Black and Hispanic people? I don't, I don't like calling it lower. You, you, I'm, yeah, I'm Black and I'm Hispanic. I'm telling you that we're on the bottom, so don't feel offended. Who's lower than black Hispanic people in America? So, so-called African Americans went into slavery on ships. We're at the bottom of society. Like, we're clearly not following the laws of God. You see how we line up with being the children of Israel versus That's you right. and your people? That's right. Sorry, say that again. The so-called Jewish man who's successful in this place, who, who, is, uh, who, who uh, 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 has the rulership and dominion over this place, but is lawless from God. How do they have that top position when the Lord says that he was going to do that? I mean, he was going to bring them low if they didn't follow his commandments. But the people who this stuff has actually happened to went into slavery on ships. Finish it out, right? Thou shalt see, see it no more again. And what happened? And there, and there, go ahead. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For what? For bond men. And what? And bond women. And what else? And no man, man shall, shall buy you. The no word man. buy means to redeem. No 
what race of people went into slavery on ships, were sold for bondmen and bondwomen, and nobody has come to get them out of this place? So-called African Americans. Did it ever happen to the Jewish man? This is what the Bible is saying was supposed to happen to the Jewish man. Uh, See what I'm saying? Give me Psalms 83rd chapter. You got something? Oh, yeah. Hold that. You out of your mind, sir. I'm about to go even longer now that you just said. Bring it out. But the Psalms, Psalm 83, from the top. Uh huh. Keep not thy silence, O God. Go ahead. Hold not thy peace. Read. And be not still. It's a prayer to God from these Israelites, right? Continue to speak unto us and continue to move through us, Lord. Don't be still and don't be silent with us. Go ahead. Oh God, for lo, thine enemies have make make a tumult. Thine enemies make a tumult, right? Now what's so crazy is we just read in Deuteronomy 28 where it says, and you you're gonna be taken into slavery on ships, sold unto who? Your enemies. For what? For bond men and bond women. Who were black and Hispanic people sold into? I mean, it was a lot of it was a lot of them though, and they weren't just sold here in America. It's through the whole Americas. It's through the whole Americas, right? But not to mention they they took them over to Europe as well, okay. right? Who were they sold into? Europeans. Europeans, which are nowadays considered what? White people. Give this man a hand. Give this man a hand. Appreciate your candor, right? Bring it out. So it says your enemies do what? Make a tumult. Make a tumult. The tumult is like a murmuring, right? It's an issue that they now have, and they go and speak to each other about this issue that they have with the children of Israel, read. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And then there's these people that also hate them. Go ahead, they lifted up their head. They've become proud over the children of Israel, read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Now it's, got, now it's a council. Now it's a coalition, right? Now it's a conspiracy. That's right. Against the children of Israel. That's right. right. And consulted oh. against thy hidden one. And when you go into that word hidden there in the Hebrew, it's dealing with those that you're supposed to protect, right? Okay. Our hidden ones are the ones that we are supposed to protect. What's the conspiracy against the people that black Hispanic are supposed to protect? It's dealing with our women and dealing with our children, right? right? There's a serious issue between the women that we are trying to make a family with. And there's a serious issue between uh, 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 the man and the children that he's now trying to raise up because they continue to be indoctrinated with the ways of America, which is completely anti-Christ and anti-God because it's about, again, liberal way of thinking. That's what it is. Uh, doing what you, doing as thou wilt, doing That's what you want to do, right? That's the conspiracy and how they consult against them. Read. Bring it out again. Go ahead. Now, verse four, they have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So this coalition of people and the conspiracy that they're murmuring is to cut them off from being a nation, right? We don't want them to be a nation anymore. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Because they wanted to take that away from the people, the name of, uh, of Israel from away from their remembrance. That did not happen to the Jewish man. They, they never went into slavery on ships. They were never sold for bondmen and bondwomen. The people never refused to let them go, and, and they were never uh, uh, left there, and nobody came to redeem them. They don't keep the commandments of God, and nobody took the name of Israel away from them. According to their history, according to, you know, the explanation is that they've had this, and they've been knowing that they've been Jews and Israelites going all the way back to Moses. They've never separated from that. Boy, the way, boy. Go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. One consent that what? They are confederate against thee. That these people are confederate against the children of Israel, read. The tabernacles of Edom. The tabernacles of Edom, read. And the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites, go ahead. Of Moab. Of Moab. And the Hagarines. Hagarines, go ahead. Gabal. Gabal. And Ammon. And Ammon, go ahead. And Amalek. And Amalek. So we see all of these nations being listed that have consulted together and conspired against the children of Israel to cut them off from being a nation and to take who they were away from them. That's right. Did they? Why is it that everything that we're reading about in the Bible as to what was going to happen to the Israelites literally happened to the African-American man? We don't keep the commandments of God. We went into slavery on ships. Nobody has come, and come to get us. And they literally beat who we were out of us. Sir. And then when you go and look at an ancient uh, West African map, it literally, they, they label it Negro land. Yes, and within that land, it literally says the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Gad. Right on that slave coast. Everything that What's we're reading answer, about. Huh? What's your answer? The answer to my question is that everything you're reading about in the Bible that, that the, was supposed to happen to the Israelites line up with who the world calls black, Hispanic, and native Indians today. That's right! That's right!
said, why? Well, why didn't it happen in the Jewish people? He said, why didn't it happen to the Jewish people? Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Go ahead. Hello. I know thy works in tribulation. He says, I know your works in tribulation. This is Christ speaking. He knows the things that the that the children of Israel are suffering, right? Their tribulation. He knows the things that they have to do and the things that they have to go through. Go ahead. And poverty. And he understands how they have been brought to poverty because that's literally what the curses were going to be. Everything that they sought out to do was going to be met with rebuke, vexation, and cursing. Go ahead. But thou art rich. But they are rich. Rich in what? Rich in faith. Mm. And they are something called being rich in wisdom. Give me that wisdom of Solomon mm. 8 and 11, I believe. Bring it out. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 11. Yeah. I shall be found of a quick con consent uh -huh. in judgment. Conceit, go ahead. And shall be admired in the sight of great men. Read. When I hold my tongue, they shall... Verse 5, excuse me. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5. Uh -huh. If riches be a possession... If riches be a possession, go ahead. To be desired in this life... If that's something to be desired in this life, read. What is richer than wisdom? What's richer than wisdom? Mm. Right? Give me the uh, Deuteronomy 4. I'm going to show you something real quick. So we understand what's richer than wisdom, right? And you, when you go on to re finish reading it, there's nothing richer than wisdom because it just says that they are in poverty, but they're rich. Yeah. Mm. So it says nothing is richer than wisdom. What is this wisdom that makes you rich? Uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 5. This book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Bring it up. Behold, I have taught you statutes uh -huh. and judgments Read. even as the Lord my God commanded me go ahead. that ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Go ahead. Y'all can die. Come yes, on, sir. man. You, you slacking, bro. Pay attention. They, they're over here listening on the street. You got to pay attention. Keep their Hold phone. on. Run it back again. Pay attention, bro. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, uh -huh. even as the Lord my God commanded me Read. that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Go ahead. Keep therefore and do them. Keep therefore and do them, read. For this is your wisdom. This is your what? For this, this is, is your, your wisdom. wisdom. And what? And, and your understanding. Go ahead. In the sight, sight of, of the nations. nations. Which shall what? Which shall, shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great this nation is a wise and understanding people. people. That's what makes the children of Israel so rich, even though Christ is witnessing their tribulation and poverty, because we still have the commandments of God. That's right. right. Okay. Go back to that read from the top. This is Revelation chapter 2 at verse 9. Bring it up. I know thy works in tribulation. Go ahead. In poverty. In poverty, read. But thou art rich. But thou art rich. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy. And I know the blasphemy, which is the stinking, filthy lie. Go ahead. Of them which say they are Jews. And what? And are not. But are what? But are, are the synagogue of the The synagogue is dealing with the chief house. Why do we say these Jewish people are the chief house or the synagogue of Satan? Give me Job 9 and 24. Uh-oh. No. You can hold it, though. Job 9 and 24. Go ahead. Look at Job chapter 9, verse 24. Read it up. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. I love reading this because when we go into Christian history, right, and how we were brought up, finish the song. He's got the whole world. Oh, God. Come on, Rick. Bro. What's your name, Rob Taz? Philo. 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 Come on. He's got the whole world in his hands. You never heard that before? He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Okay, that's fine, right? But this is a Christian or a gospel song. And they've been teaching us that it's Jesus who's got the whole world in his hand. But these are the same people telling us what? To not keep the commandments of God. The Bible teaching us the wicked got the world in his hand and it's been given to him by God. Read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. And with, when this wicked has the world in his hand, it says he covers the faces of the judges. From the biblical perspective, because I know you're still figuring it out, right? I don't want to put anything on you per se, but you can understand the biblical perspective. Who would you say is the greatest judge to ever walk the earth? To walk the earth, Jesus. Jesus. Right. And who do they say Jesus looked like? 
if we Google Jesus right now, what well, we'll you'll get a lot of different. No, we won't. You'll, you'll get the main one, sure. The white What's the main one? Yeah. So you telling me if we Google Jesus right now, it's going to be a bunch of different Jesus that come up? The first ones will be the white guy with the blue eyes, but there's lots of other ones, yeah. I'm going to challenge you on that real quick. Jesus, oh. images, white, 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 yeah. white, 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 white. It might be a little Arab one, one right there. <laughs> but the rest of them, white, 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 white. Oh, we got one Negro Jesus right there. White, 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 white. He covers the faces of the judges thereof because even if we looked up Abraham, even if we looked up Noah, even if we looked up Adam, even if we looked up David, even if we looked up Solomon, even if we looked up John the Baptist, all the disciples, they're all white. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges. Go ahead. If not, if this, if who we can recognize has been covering the faces of the judges, if that ain't him, read, where and who is he? Where is he and who is he? If, if our observation is just not correct, where and who is he? That's why we call these people the chief out to Satan, because the Bible says it, and it starts to give the characteristics, it starts to give certain behavior and things that they would do to let us know exactly who we were dealing with. That's why it made sure to identify the people who we were sold into slavery to were our enemies. The people who took our identity away from us were our enemies. And then you asked me earlier, you, do you guys believe that Faith in Jesus, uh, faith and salvation is through Jesus Christ. We absolutely, absolutely believe that. But what is salvation? Give me Luke one. That's right. Let's see what salvation is. Let's get the actual definition of it. Whoever get that first, quick. Look at Luke chapter okay. one, verse sixty-seven. Go ahead. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. The his there talk about John the Baptist's father Zacharias, right? He was filled with the Holy Spirit, read, and prophesied, saying, saying what? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For what? For he hath visited and did what? And redeemed his people. He visited and redeemed his people through who the world calls Christ. Read. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us. He raised up this salvation for us, the children of Israel. Read. In the house of his servant David. Because Christ came through the loins of David. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. The same way he had already prophesied of this, right? From the prophets of old. Go ahead. Which have been since the world began. Read on. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we, the children of Israel, should be saved from our enemies. That's right. The people that we were sold into in slavery, taken into slavery on ships, sold into for bombing and bomb women. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah. It's the point of the Bible. Sure. The children of Israel after suffering those curses, we're going to be saved from the very people they were taken into slavery to on ships and sold for bombing and bomb women that nobody has, it says no man shall buy, meaning no man was gonna come and be able to do it because it was gonna be something supernatural. It was gonna be something outside of this carnal world. It was gonna be something coming from the heavenly father, the most high God. Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate us. The hand of all that hate us, that same language that we read in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter, right? Go ahead. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. To perform the mercy that have already been promised. So we get our land back. And then we also get some, you might say 14. You got something? Nah, then it, hold that though, uh, Deuteronomy 30. Get uh, uh, Isaiah 14, bring it out. And to remember his holy covenant. And to remember the holy covenant, read. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham uh -huh. that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemy might serve him without fear. And because remember, he says now that the children of Israel upon the mercies uh, uh, that were promised upon them being performed, that at that point we would serve the most high God without fear because the only reason why we were in servitude to another nation is for violating the laws of God. We read that Deuteronomy 28, 15. If you do not listen, Curses are gonna come upon you. One of those curses was take, being taken into slavery on ships, sold as bond men, bond women. All right, get that in um, Isaiah 14 from the top. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse one. Bring it up. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Jacob is a forefather of the children of Israel, right? Go ahead. And will yet choose Israel. Read. And set them in their own land. Go ahead, That's, this, is a, this is a mercy promise. And this is in the Old Testament, so when we read in Luke, this is what he was referencing, right? Upon the salvation that God has raised up through Jesus, through the loins and the lineage of David, that we would get this promise that he had already spoken about in the book of Isaiah. Go ahead. 
and the strangers shall be joined with us. So we're going to get into our own land, and these strangers, these non-Israelites, they're going to be joined with us in the land of God. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And they are going to cleave to us. When we read in Deuteronomy the fourth chapter, it says all these other nations is going to observe how we conducted ourselves and regard us as wise and understanding people, right? So that's why they're going to cleave unto us, because they're going to recognize the richness of our wisdom. Read. And the people shall take them. And these people are going to do what? They're going to take these Israelites, read. And bring them to their place. And they're going to carry the Israelites back to the place that they were responsible for taking them out. Go ahead. And the house of Israel. Shall what? Shall possess them in the land of the Lord. Shall do what? Shall, shall possess, possess them in the, in the land, land of the Lord. For what? For servants. And what else? And handmaids. For servants and handmaids. Go ahead. And they shall take them captive. They're going to take the children of Israel. are going to take the people captive. Who's what? Whose captives they were. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had delivered and raised up a horn of salvation to deliver them from the hand of their enemies and from those that hate them. It says, and the people that you was in captivity to, it's then going to go in captivity under you. That's, That's right. right. Go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And the people that were oppressing you, you now are going to rule over them. That's we are clearly right. established that the Jewish people, whether you want to say that they have the top position, you know that they're over so-called black and Hispanic people in this place. Clear cut. And they're clearly oppressing black people. That's clear. So it's going to be a reversal. This is a prophecy and a promise from God. Those mercies and promises is going to be performed at the time of salvation. And, you know, it, 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 it takes what? For the so-called black, Hispanic, and native Indian to come back into the knowledge of who they are. Then return back into the law, attached to the commandments of God. So then it can trigger this domino effect of all of these blessings and the erasing of the curse. Go ahead. That's right. Deuteronomy 30 and 1. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass when all these things come upon thee, uh -huh. the blessings and the curse. Before we even get into that, so you asked a question, you said, so what's the answer, right? I, I see the, your point. These people aren't the children of God. They have literally taken it on for themselves and lied in order for what? To take the true children of Israel, the name away from them, teach them that they don't have to keep the commandments of God to, because they know if, they, if the children of Israel don't keep the commandments, they'll always be subjugated unto another nation, which at this point in time is a so-called white nation. Boy, that's what you boy. No. I mean, if not, where and who is he? Right. Right? So when we ask you, how do you feel about the so-called rape, rob, and murder of blacks, Hispanic, and Native Indians in this place? What would you say? How do you feel about that? Uh, I don't understand the question. How do you feel about the rape, rob, and murder of blacks, Hispanic, and Native Indians in America? Well, that's wrong. It's wrong, right? Yeah. What do you think should be done for that? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Yes, you do. You want to know why I know you know the answer? Because you got to put your, it's called empathy. You got to put yourself in those shoes. If it happened to you, what would you want to be done? That's they right. They did. Okay, yeah. it, because that's anybody not, would want not, that. That's not following Christ, though. Why isn't it? Revenge? No. <laughs> you got it? <laughs> Bring it out. Just look around. Hold on, hold on. What you got? <laughs> Let's get Revelation 13 real quick and then we're going to get nice to be done by, by God, not by man, right? Oh, let's, we're, we're going to get that too. We're going to get that too. Let's let the Bible speak. We don't want to bring anything off of our heart. Jeremiah 50. Hold on. What you got? 19? 13? Get, get 19. He's at 13. You get Jeremiah 50 and also give me Ezekiel 25. After these, I really do I got you. I got you. Let, let's, uh, so, so listen, we got, we got four verses for you. You got Revelation 13, Revelation 19, Jeremiah 50, and Ezekiel 25, and then we'll let you go. Revelation 13, get it. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9. This Read is up. Jesus Christ. Go ahead. If any man have an ear, go ahead. Let him hear. Read. He that leadeth into captivity, he that leads into captivity shall what? Shall go, go, go into, into captivity. captivity. We literally just read that in Isaiah 14. You're going to take them captives whose captives they were. Go ahead. He that killeth with the sword go ahead. must be killed with the sword. Read. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The same saints who are keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ is faithfully and patiently waiting to take those people in captivity who had them in captivity and kill those people with the sword who had them killed with the sword. Get that, you got Revelation 19? Bring it out. Book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 11. Bring it out. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. Heaven opened and a white horse was seen. Go ahead. And he that sat upon him uh -huh. was called faithful and true. Who's that faithful and true man riding upon this white horse? Who the world calls Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And in righteousness, and in righteousness, go ahead. He doeth 
judge and make war. He judges and make war righteously. Go ahead. That was it on that? Okay. Go ahead. Bring, bring it up. Bring it up. This Jeremiah 50. This book of Jeremiah chapter 51 starting at 19. It says the portion of Jacob is not like this. The portion of Jacob, again, which is the progenitor of the children of Israel. And a lot of times after Jacob's life, lifetime, Jacob is a reference to the nation of Israel, right? The portion of Jacob, it's not like anybody else's. Go ahead. For he is the former of all things. God is the former of all things. Go ahead. And Israel. And Israel is what? Is the rod of his inheritance. And Israel is the direct inheritor of the things that God has created. That's right. Lord, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord of hosts is his name. Read. Thou art my battle axe. Israel is God's battle axe. And what? And weapons, weapons of war. war. And weapons of war. Go ahead. For with thee. For with the children of Israel. Go ahead. Will I break, will I God go ahead break in pieces break in pieces who the nations and who else and with thee go ahead will I destroy kingdoms read and with thee will I break in pieces the horse the horse and his rider the horse and his rider and it goes down and starts listing a whole bunch of more people with the battle axe and weapons of war of God you got that bring it out you know what I'm talking about second that's only one of six get that in um uh, you got the Ezekiel 25 Bring it out. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 25, verse 14. Bring it out. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. So you, the vengeance that's coming from God, it, no, 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 start at 12. You got, you, you're just skipping all the good stuff, right? <laughs> Bring it out. Verse 12, thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom had dealt against the house of Jacob. Because the children of Edom has dealt against the house of Jacob, go ahead, which is the children of Israel, read. By taking vengeance, go ahead, and hath greatly offended Read. and ravaged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom. God is going to stretch out his hand upon Edom. Go ahead. And will cut off man and beast from it. He's going to cut off man and beast from it. Read. And I will make it desolate from Teman. Uh huh. And they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. These are the lands contained within the uh, kingdom or the people of Edom. Read. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. God is going to put his vengeance on Edom. Go ahead. By the hand of my people, Israel. By way of the hand of his people, Israel. Read. And they shall do in Edom. And they are going to do in Edom according to what? According to mine anger. According to what? According to mine anger and, and according to my fury. And according to the fear of God, the children of Israel is going to put their hand on all those that have rape, rob, murder, pillage. Keep reading. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. And these other nations are going to know the vengeance of God through what the children of Israel is going to do to the last one. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. Read. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God. It is a righteous thing with God to do what? To recompense to tribulation. To recompense tribulation. Recompense, compensate is to pay. Re meaning back. Right or again. It is a righteous thing with God to pay back tribulation to who? To them that trouble you. In their trouble. This is right here in the Bible. That's why I said I want the Bible to speak and not and have it be all of our heart and our words. And this is all of the things that the Christian church will not ever teach you and will not ever tell you, nor your ancestry or your nation of people is going to tell you the truth about who you guys are, where you come from, and the faith that you, and the faith rather, that you have in store coming from God. We dealt with our punishment. We took it with a smile on our face. And we expect y'all to do the same. That's right. All right, Philo. It was good, man. All right? And with that, man, we give all honor, glory, and praise to the Most High God of Anawa Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, of Masha Yahweh Shah. We say, Quam Yashrub! Quam Yashrub! For all his sons and his daughters, won't fill the cities with faces. Iniquities of their father, bloodthirstiest of our nation. Not for living water, waiting to put that work in. Hamashiach gives that order, prepare slaughter. For all his sons and his daughters, won't fill the cities with faces. Iniquities of their father, bloodthirstiest of our nation. Not for living water, waiting to put this work in. Hamashiach gives that order.